Hello YouTube! My name is Nye, you join me in the Finale Guitar Shop in Sheffield and you're watching Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for Celtic backing guitar tutorials. Today's video I'm going to be concluding uh, my guide to John Doyle's chords uh, as taken from the clip of him playing with Liz Carroll live in Boston in 2009. You can find that clip linked in the box down below. I'm going to start off in this video having a little look at the tune which they play beginning from about 1 minute and 10 seconds into that clip. So the tune is in the key of D minor, it's actually in the Aeolian mode, which is quite uncommon, um, which is the kind of darker of the two minor modes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about things like Ionian, Dorian, Mixolydian and Aeolian, then check out my guide to the Celtic music theory in the corner of the screen right there. Uh, that'll really be a very useful thing for you to understand what the four modes are that are used in Celtic music and how they influence what chords you can use. So. That's a minor mode, so he's starting on, um, effectively, D minor would be chord 1. And John Doyle always uses this chord for D. It's neither major nor minor, because it's not got a third in it. Um, I find this chord quite hard to play, but John Doyle's also obviously got very flexible little fingers. So that's his chord 1. And what he does um, very quickly into that tune is he goes down to chord 7, which is C. And that's kind of standard practice because you'll recall um, if you've read my book or seen my other videos about picking chords in minor keys that your main chords tend to be chords 1, 7 and 5 in a minor key. So chord 7 is C if we're in D minor. Like that. And because we're in drop D um, and a C chord's root is on the A string we can just use a standard C shape for that. So what John Doll's going to do is to get back from C back to D minor he's going to use a little chromatic shift. And I said at the end of the last video that this was something you could do. You can go between any two chords in a key which are separated by a tone and just slide the first shape up into the second one um, or the second shape down into the first one, depending whether you're going up or down, you know. So with C and D, D's chord 1, C's chord 7, if I want to go down from D down to C, I could do something like... Like that. And if I'm John Doyle and I want to go from C back up to D, I can play a normal C chord, slide it up one fret, and go back to D. Something like that. Another type of linking chord which I've talked about a lot in my other videos is something which I've kind of borrowed the name for from jazz terminology which is casing. So if I am on D minor, or just D in this case, um, I want to get down to C, but I don't want to just go straight to C, I want to make it more interesting than that. What I'll do is, thinking about my root notes, here's my D, here's my C, I'm going to deliberately overshoot that C and go down to B. So I'll go like that, like Mario. So what John Doll's going to do is he's going to start from D, he's going to deliberately overshoot his C and then come back a step. And so what you would think normally if you're in the key of D Aeolian, in D Aeolian there's a B flat, so you'd think it would go D, B flat, C. Two notes down in the scale and then one forward. So that would sound like this. Something like that. But that's not very satisfying. And the reason it's not so very satisfying has to do with the placement of the semitones within a scale. If you look at a scale, um, we're in D Aeolian here. So if you look at where the semitones are, there's a semitone here between A to B flat. Um, there's another semitone between the second and third notes, uh, E up to F. And when you hear um, two notes which are separated by a semitone within a scale, there will always be one of those two notes which is uncomfortable and wants to resolve to the other. And that's kind of the foundation of all of Western music and what makes harmony satisfying. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that for now. But if we were in D Aeolian proper and we went from D to B flat, B flat is wanting to go down to A if you hear it because there's a semitone separating those two, and so that is a kind of more natural shift for the uncomfortable B-flat note to go down to the fifth, and from there back to, to one. 
If, on the other hand, we were in D Dorian, um, here, if you look at where my semitones are now, there's a semitone from B, because in Dorian it's B natural, not B flat. My sixth note is not flattened as it would be in the Aeolian mode. So from B, it wants to go up to C, and that's what John Doyle is going to do. So what he actually does is he borrows a chord from the Dorian mode um, and puts it over this tune in the Aeolian mode, even though he's mostly been using Aeolian type chords for the rest of the tune. Now, if you want to find out more about borrowing chords from the Dorian for the Aeolian and vice versa, I've made a whole video about that in the past. You can find it linked in the corner right now. That will kind of clarify some things on that if you're sort of not really understanding what I'm talking about right now. Um, but yeah, this is a really interesting thing you can do. So if you're playing in um, D Aeolian and you want to do this casing technique, I'm going to go from my D. I'm going to go down to this, which is a G over B. So it's a G chord, a G chord, you know, a normal G chord is like that if you're in standard tuning. And what I've done is I've left the top string off it um, and I've left the bottom string off it as well, so that it's a G chord still, but the lowest note in it is B. Therefore, it's called G over B, an inversion of a G chord. And that is a really nice uh, little casing chord, if you like, which is going to want to lead into C. So I get... Like that. Now let's move on and have a little look at the B part of this tune. So the B part begins very much on a chord 4 section, um, and John Doyle backs that with G minor, which is chord 4 from um, D Aeolian. And what he does for the G minor chord is he actually just uses a uh, G shape with no thirds in it, so it's all just octaves. Oh, and there's a fifth at the top as well. So he goes... Something like that, he does a little slide up. And all he's doing there is a technique that I talked about in part two, where you just, if you've got a long block on one chord, you can run either up or down the chord scale from it. What John Doyle's done there is he's taken that block of G minor and he's just gone up the chord scale using a tromboneable shape. So he starts on G like this, goes up to A minor, then he goes on up to B flat major, and then up to C. So he's just running up the whole scale. Something like that, and then back to D at the end. I want to move on now and have a look at the next tune, which is at around 2 minutes and 10 seconds into the clip. The tune's in G minor, and what John Doyle does here with the chords is interesting, not because of its complexity, but because of the amount of energy that is given to the set by just cutting back to complete simplicity. So he just takes a G minor, and he basically just stays on it. stays on it for a long time and it sounds absolutely great. So this is a really nice thing to think about. If you've been building out your chord progressions and adding more complexity, maybe you're getting to the point where you're kind of struggling to think up more ideas or um, you've really built up a set, the tune's about to change. When you get into the next tune, drop back to something really simple. Um, it actually really adds a lot of energy because suddenly the melody becomes the focal point again and it kind of soars away um, and adds a lot to the to the set. On the second round of this tune, John Doyle does something really interesting in the B part, which is something like this. So he starts off on G minor, and he's playing it using just this plain G octave shape that he always uses, like that. Then he's going to go down to um, what is chord 6 in the key of G Aeolian. So if we're in the key of G Aeolian, chord 6 is E flat major. Um, and the way that John Doyle is going to play this is using actually a new shape. I really don't understand how he plays this shape fast. I think he must just have a particularly flexible left hand and very skinny fingers. Because I actually physically can't play this. Um, I'm going to show you an easier way of doing this. But this is the shape that he uses for E flat. It's like this. So that is an E flat major chord, but it's very, very hard to play. If I was going to try and replicate this, the way I'd do it is with a little mini bar, barring the bottom three strings. And then I'd put my two um, fingers up here, my ring finger on the G string third fret. 
and then my little finger on the third fret of the B string. I personally find this much easier to do at speed. Um, yeah, but anyway, however you want to do it. After that, he goes down to D using the D shape that we touched upon before. And what he does next is he goes to the octave shape one semitone below the root of G minor. So that's like a, a G flat or a or an F sharp, depending how you look at it. So all together that gives you something like that. You might be wondering how is it that this F sharp chord can go in a chord five section? I thought chord five had to be chord five or its related major. Um, What's happening here is that they're kind of borrowing something from classical music, which is that in classical land and jazz and other sort of more modern genres, um, chord five can be replaced with a major chord because a major chord wants to resolve back to chord one much more than a minor chord does. Um, if you're familiar with concepts like the, the melodic minor, then you'll know that the, in the melodic minor you raise the seventh, and that makes chord 5 major and makes it want to come back to chord 1. And that's kind of what John Doyle's doing here, because if you think about um, G, G's major 7th, one semitone below, would be F sharp. And so he's playing an F sharp chord which really wants to resolve back to G, and it works very well. It's a very modern sounding progression, I mean it doesn't really sound like your sort of standard folky affair, but it's a real nice little touch, uh, it sounds very, very cool. So that's the thing to think about. If you're playing in any minor key, consider the fact that you could, if you're careful and sparing with it, sort of momentarily add a major seventh in there um, by either playing um, the root chord shifted down one semitone, if it's a slidable shape like this, or by playing the diminished chord, which is one semitone below the root chord, if you're um, playing in a different tuning or it's not convenient to do this slidey trick. Now the last little bit of this clip um, is based around, I believe it's two tunes just amalgamated because I'm sure I know one of them with some different parts um, and I'm sure I know one of the other ones without the first one joined onto it. So I think basically Liz Carroll's just kind of taken two, two tunes that she likes and merged them together. Unless um, this is just another very similar tune I don't know, no idea. Anyway, the tune is based around A major and it also then has a part in A mixolydian and then it has a part in D. Mm, debatably, it's several tunes, you know, whatever. What John Doyle's doing here is just tromboning shapes. So he's just using that slidable shape that I talked about before, which can be either major or minor, and he's going... like that, just to make all the chords in the key of A. And as I've said before, if you want to find all the chords in the key, get yourself a mode wheel. They're very cheap, postage available anywhere in the world, and they're probably super useful for you. Get one now in the corner. So there's really not a lot to say about that. It's uh, really cool that you can trombone that fast, but um, with a little bit of practice, you will get your head around it. What I would say is, pick all of the major keys in order, and work out how to trombone in them. So work out what chords are in the key, and practice moving between the relevant shapes. So if I was in D, I'd go D, E minor, F sharp minor, G, A, D minor, C sharp, I'm going to use the minor shape because it's a diminished chord, and then D. So I can practice my tromboning. With those kinds of exercises, but it's really very easy once you get the hang of it. Um, if I do the same thing for G, it's G major, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, F sharp minor, G, those kinds of things. Um, so just practice that for all of the major keys and then work out for the other modes which ones are they the same chords as. So with my example in G major, A Dorian's the same chords as that. So if I started from A minor, then I'd have all the same chords running through the scale though and starting and finishing from A minor it's going to sound like chords for A Dorian or whatever so you get the 
idea, those kinds of tromboning exercises are really, really, really handy and that's going to enable you to do exactly what John Doyle is doing in that last set with relative ease because it's just easy to slide that shape around and it looks and sounds super impressive. So that is it for this part of the video. I really hope this has been helpful to you and not too heavy on the music theory. Um, if you didn't get all the music theory, I really do recommend checking out my book, Backing Guitar Techniques for Traditional Celtic Music which has got all that stuff but presented in a very kind of accessible way. Uh, you can get that as an ebook with a free accompanying download. If you buy the paperback, the download is separate. Both of those are available in the corner of the screen right now. Um, also check out the free videos on folkfriend.co.uk. There's loads of helpful stuff about how to um, get your head around the music theory for folk music on there as well. If you have enjoyed this video, as ever, drop me a comment, say hello, uh, it'd be really nice to hear from you. Hit the like button as well, hit the subscribe while you're there and you'll get all my free videos every weekend. So thanks very much for tuning in, I'll see you all next week for the final part of this series on John Doyle, which is going to be covering his amazing way of syncopating real strumming patterns.